My name is Kia, I'm a personal finance guru and the creator of the platform Pennies to Pounds. And this is a platform where we educate young people on all things personal finance. Today, I'm going to be speaking to you about key home buying terms and explain them for you. There's lots of jargon out there, so I'm here to help you simplify it. For example, you may have heard loan to value, and that is the percentage of the mortgage that you need to take out versus the value of your home that you're trying to buy. For example, if you're trying to buy a home that's worth 200,000 pounds and you've got a deposit of 50,000 pounds, you have to get a mortgage of 150,000 pounds, which means that your loan to value is 75%. Once you know what your loan to value is, you can start looking at mortgages. There are loads of different ones out there, but the three main ones are fixed term, variable term, and tracker mortgages. A fixed term mortgage is where the interest rate is fixed for the period of time that you agree on. That could be two years, five years, or 10 years, but interest rate is fixed for that period of time. The second mortgage type is a variable mortgage. And this is where the interest rate for your mortgage can fluctuate. It can go up or down, depending on what interest rate the bank wants to set. It can be 2%, 5%, or any percentage the bank chooses. And it can also be in line with the Bank of England base rate, but not always. The third mortgage type is a tracker mortgage. And this is the mortgage that tracks the base rate of the Bank of England, plus an interest rate that the bank may also set. For example, if the bank sets an interest rate of 1% and the base rate of the Bank of England is 0.1%, the interest rate for your mortgage will be 1.1%. So, you might be wondering, what's the benefits of each? Well, with a fixed term, you know exactly how much you're paying for your mortgage every single month. A variable mortgage is beneficial as it gives you more flexibility because you're not tied down to a fixed term. But remember, this interest rate can change as lenders are able to move the interest rate up or down as and when they like. The tracker mortgage is also beneficial as it provides more flexibility like the variable mortgage as you're not tied down to a fixed term. It's also more reliable as the interest rate usually only changes if the Bank of England changes it or is there an economic change. You might come across three different ways of buying a property. The first one is a regular mortgage where you just need a deposit and you get a mortgage for the remainder of the house value. Second could be shared ownership where you buy a percentage of the property and you rent the remainder. And the third is help to buy where you put up a 5% deposit, get a government-backed loan for your 20% outside of London or 40% in London, and get a mortgage for the remainder. Once you've decided where you want to buy and what mortgage you want to go with, you then need to apply for a mortgage in principle with your mortgage broker. A mortgage in principle is a pre-agreed amount stating how much the lender is willing to lend you to buy your property. This typically lasts for 60 to 90 days before you have to go back and get a new mortgage in principle. A mortgage in principle allows you to go ahead and search for a property that you want to buy and give the seller confidence that you're able to put an offer in. Another few terms you may have heard is exchange and completion. Exchange is the exchange of contracts between the buyer and the seller and is legally binding and all the terms and conditions have been agreed upon with all parties. And completion is the fun part. That's when everything has been agreed, you get your moving date and you finally get your keys. Another term you may hear is credit score. A credit score is a score given to you by credit reference agencies that shows how good of a borrower you are. If you want to see how good your credit score is, you can look online. That carries out a soft search, which has a very small impact on your credit score. Hard searches have a bigger impact on your credit score. For example, when you open up a bank account, when you take out a new phone contract, or when you take out a new line of credit. If you've gone online and checked your credit score and it's not as good as you want it to be, don't worry. There are different things that you can do to try and get that credit score up. For example, making sure you're on the electoral roll, AKA registering to vote, making sure you pay your bills on time and taking out a credit card can also help increase your credit score. But remember to be responsible with your borrowing and make sure you make regular payments back to your credit card. It's also worth noting that when you go and check your credit score, make sure you look through your file and check and see if there's any anomalies and make sure everything on there is yours. There's a lot of information to take in there but hopefully this video helps to break down the jargon that you may come across on the home buying process to hopefully help you on your own home buying journey.